Okay, it's Pat here, uh, Lord of the Lobsters apparently, and welcoming you to Ask Drunk Holes. Not quite sure what it's all about, but I'm sure it'll be marvellous. Probably a pub quiz or something like that. Have a fantastic time, and um, remember, Lord of the Lobsters has said, uh, go ahead and start your evening, afternoon. Uh, Ask Drunk Holes. I don't know how many times I can tell you this, man. Just because you don't know something, it does not mean there is some spectacular conspiracy behind it. We've been on this earth for nearly 30 years now. We've experienced hundreds of thousands of hours. We've seen the world try and destroy itself on countless occasions, and I've still never met anyone that makes traffic cones. No, it has to be someone's job to make traffic cones. They don't just appear on the road at night. Look, everyone we've ever met falls into the same working categories. Retail, office, hospitality, some form of science or teaching. I've never been up to a guy in a bar and said, how do you pay your rent? And have him go, I make traffic homes. Okay, so, so you just walk up to guys in bars, do you, and you ask them how they pay their rent? So what do you think happens exactly? The thing fairies, of course. So is this going to be another one of them China doesn't exist things? Have you ever been to China, Vino? No, but my girlfriend has. Did she? Or did she just fly around above the airport while they redressed it with gongs and stuff? I'm not sure if that's racist or are you really that stupid? Man, we really need to stop hanging out. What's up with him? I don't know, he's just on another one of his crazy rants again. Oh, the thing fairies. Yeah, them fucking things. Well, to be fair to him, he does make some good points in this full research paper that he got published on the subject. The materialization of traffic controlling implements by potential energy manifesting itself as fairies, imps, genies, gremlins, pixies and sprites. For real. You know, if he actually put his mind to something useful, he might really make a mark on the world. So guys, it's almost my birthday, and you know what that means. Please say it's not another murder mystery night. Murder mystery night! <laughs> but Luke, it's a tradition. It's like every year at Christmas when we reenact that one scene from Jingle All the Way. <sighs> These cookies! Put the cookie down. No! But Jorge, we do that every weekend. Ooh! These cookies, they taste so good! Put the cookie down. No! I'll switch to lie, why the fuck are we doing this? Come on guys, it'll be fun. No, here's how it's gonna go. You're gonna set the whole thing up like you do every year and you're gonna be the killer, because you always are, because you're the only one who's got the fucking rules. Apart from that one year, when you were the first murder victim, trying to catch us out. Then you got mad that no one tried to murder you. I know I wanted to murder him that night. I swear, if Luke hadn't have asked what was going on three hours in, we'd still be there now. 
and you're still using the same set that I bought you like 10 years ago. Back then, stuff like Seinfeld was relevant. Well, there is something nostalgic about it, though. Seinfeld or Jorge's birthday parties? Well, seeing as they both get repeated over and over and over and over, I'd say both. But Vino, this year is going to be different. This year is going to be a surprise. As long as I can sit in the corner, drink tequila, and quietly contemplate where my life went wrong, then I'm down. So the same thing we do every weekend then. You are invited to a part that will be filled with screams and death and other scary things. The night will be filled with surprise, torture and murder. Murder! Murder! Dude, did you post this to our house? First class. Damn. Yeah, it's a little tight, it's a little tight. I was feeling it, man. It's a little tight. It's, nice. it's a little tight. I was enjoying that. So, anyways, I was thinking I would just go as a corpse, and then after I've been killed, I can just go home because you know he thinks I'm already dead. No, mate. If I've got to put up with this again, so have you. What do you think? That's a little brown. Mm. Look, I really do not get who he's trying to kid. What? Like we're not going to know he's the murderer again? It's probably just going to be him in some stupid fucking top hat or something. Seriously. Well, it's the same game we play every year, so we know he's going to be the murderer. I say we call him out straight after the first murder, go hit the after party, rivers of tequila, hot babes in inner tubes just floating down the river. It's going to be sweet. Man, that sounds fucking awesome. Pow. Okay, I get why you got some handcuffs for some kinky birthday sex, but why are we at the fish market? You'll see in a bit. I need a lobster. We have this one. It's from the North Atlantic and it's four years old and will go lovely with this complimentary garlic butter. Excellent. What are its claws like? Well, it's dead, so tasty. But they're sharp, right? Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done with crazy for today, so 7 o'clock out. 34 Murder Avenue. Yes. You're going to find it hard to find a fixed new address. God, you're boring. It's 78 Wood Green Road. You even changed the number. Mmm, and you could say that tonight you're going to be sleeping with the fishes. I'm too sober for this. I'll see you at 7. Yes, 7 p.m. Sharp! Welcome, guests. Welcome to a night of terror that will decide whether you live or die. The night will consist of cleverly constructed games that will determine whether you walk out of here alive or whether you crawl out on your blood-ridden knees. This is why we told you not to get him the saw box set. You know he takes things too far. Tonight is the night we question how far you will go to secure your own freedom and how far will you go to save your friends. Tonight is a night of terror and torture. If you want to leave, then do so now. <laughs> I thought this was going to be a murder mystery night. It was until I watched the saw box set that you got for my birthday. Thanks for that, by the way. I watched that on repeat that night we tried to get drunk on Red Bull. Yeah, that was a pretty intense 72 hours. So, do you have any questions? Yeah, whose building's this? Well, in that case, if you'd all like to follow me through to the drawing room, I have a short presentation to show you. Since the dawn of time, man has feared only one thing. The murderous deep sea lobster. Oh, Jorge, you clearly just put your voice over this video. The lobster has the crushing power of almost 500 pounds per claw, and it can crush bone 
into dust. That's definitely not true. The clipping of its claw can produce a frequency that can interfere with Wi-Fi and phone signals. So calling the police will not help you. Even if that wasn't complete bullshit, I'm pretty sure the police wouldn't help anyway. If you were ever to be trapped in a small pool of water, or if you were suspended above one, or heaven forbid, locked in an enclosed gas-filling cell, you would certainly end up sleeping with the fishes. Ah, now I get it. Oh, and lobsters are immune to all poisonous gases. And ham, they really love ham. And banging. Ooh. Okay, Jorge, what's the first game? I'm ready to get this over with and go and hit the bar. Ah, so someone is keen to make some choices as to whether they will live the rest of their life normally or as a jellyfish. Come with me. Why do you suppose he took all his clothes off? Right, now as you find yourself trapped in mortal danger, time to find out if you live or die. You know that I helped you put the handcuffs on and you helped me step into the bathtub, right? SHUT UP! Now, in a minute, I'm going to unblindfold you and in front of you will be a picture of a 90s TV star with a lobster in disguise. You will then have approximately 10 seconds to tell me who this is before the candle that I will shortly light will burn through the rope which is connected to an intricate set of pulleys which you can't see holding this lobster above you. If you do not answer before that, it will drop upon your body, on which I have taken a copious amount of ham, the lobster's favourite snack, apart from human flesh, of course. Where in the hell did Jorge learn about the animal kingdom? Wikipedia? Yeah, if you are going to do this with someone, then maybe don't do it with the person you bought a dead lobster with earlier. Silence, you fool! Are you scared? Only that we might be trespassing right now. Then let the games begin. Fuck's sake, has anyone got a life rock and borrow? Yeah, in my trouser pocket. Oh, thanks, dude. Pat Sharp. Give me that photo. I feel like you put a lot more effort into this trap. And now it is your turn to face man's greatest fear. Stepping on Lego. I thought you said lobsters were man's greatest fear. Do you not see the ferocious lobster amongst the bricks of pain? Oh, and there's some plugs as well because, you know, fuck plugs. <laughs> I shall now explain to you how this trap of maniacal evil will work. I will give to you a question which you will then have 30 seconds to answer after I've activated this fan behind you. This will cause the chair to slowly rock forwards and backwards, eventually crushing the shit plastic containers I've built this thing on. As they crush, it will activate a spring hidden beneath them, flinging you and the chair into the air, landing down upon the plugs of pain and the Lego of doom as the lobster slowly devours your soul. Are you okay with this? No, not at all. Well, you're doing it anyway. Oh, God. Now then, which 90s TV star... Pat Sharp! Oh, for fuck's sake. How come Vino gets a real life-threatening game? I guess Jorge just hates him more than us. So, Vinny, now it is your turn. Will the thing that you love most, aside from your horrendously overinflated ego, be your coffin or your ambulance? It is time to decide. Now what do you reckon will kill you first? The gas that is slowly filling your car 
or the deathly lobster which is currently sitting beside you, ready to... Strike! This is dumb. You know that, right? So, Vinny, your question then. If Pat Sharp is on a train heading out of London at approximately 300 miles an hour, with a total of 453 passengers, it makes five stops over the next hour in which 33 and a half passengers get off, a quarter with their dogs, some leaving behind their trash. Uh, the conductor then gets very angry, shoots three people, Pat Sharp then saves two, but kills a dog. Then, why in the fucking hell did you leave my copy of KOTOR out of the case, you motherfucking twat? Oh! I thought this was going somewhere. Okay, I don't think he's coming back. So, now that all of that's over, we can start playing the murder mystery game. So, who do you reckon killed all the Tony? Who the fuck is Tony? Oh, you remember Tony. He's the Skyrim guard we went to after the second faith healer who had raped us, and then he did it again, but with that massive sword. Who killed all the Tony? Was it me? Or was it Vinny? It wasn't me, guys. You? You are correct. It was indeed me. You may now all leave with your lives intact. I hope this has taught you the valuable lesson of putting my fucking stuff away. Oh, it was Tony's creepy building. By the way, Jorge. You left your fucking game out. He was using it as a coaster. Not me, mate.